Theater was one of the earliest means humanity had to bring spoken and written stories to life. Though some may consider it obsolete, theater remains a fundamental part of culture worldwide. The anomaly we will explore today takes advantage of this very quality, and the many ways art is shared in the modern age to cause its violent effects. Item number recipe 701 Object class Euclid Special Containment Procedures all materials relating to SCP-701 are to be kept in a triple locked archive at storage site. These items currently consist of the two currently extant copies of the 1640s quarto, 27 copies of the 1965 trade paperback edition, 10 copies of the 1971 hardcover printing, 21 floppy diskettes, consisting of data seized from raids on one SVHS video cassette tape designated SCP-701-19-8, and one steel knife of unknown origin designated SCP-701-19-3. At no time are any of these items to be removed from the room. Access to the area is to be heavily monitored. Absolutely no personnel whatsoever is to be granted access to the archive without the express in-person permission of doctors. And Description SCP-701, The Hank King's Tragedy, is a Caroline era revenge tragedy in five acts. Performances of the play are associated with sudden psychotic and behaviors among both observers and participants, as well as the manifestation of a mysterious figure classified as SCP-701-1. Historical estimates plus the number of lives claimed by the play at between and over the past 300 years. Performances of the Hank Ains tragedy do not always end with an outbreak. Of the recorded performances, only 36.78% have ended in SCP-701 events. According to historical records and investigations, these outbreaks generally follow the same pattern. 1 to 2 weeks, 7 to 14 days prior to the event. During the dress rehearsal period, Cast members will begin to spontaneously deviate from the published text of the play, rather than improvisation or gaffes associated with going off script. Say deviations will be both orderly and consistent, as if the actors were working off a new version of the script. The cast and production crew will seem unaware of any change, and, if it is brought to their attention, will state that the play has run that way from the beginning. Two to three hours prior to the event, the outbreak generally occurs during opening night, or else at the production with the greatest planned attendance, generally falling within the first week after the play's opening. One to two hours before the event, SCP-701-1 begins to appear on stage in the final scene of Act 1, generally in the background or to the side of the main action. It may seem to enter or exit the stage area, but does not appear to ever enter the backstage or offstage area. It simply disappears when not on stage. The cast does not appear to notice or comment on SCP-701-1, at least at first. The event SCP-701-1 appears fully on stage during the banquet scene in Act 5. Here, it will be incorporated into the action of the play as the Hanged King. The cast will either murder each other or commit. Sometimes, using items that seem to appear spontaneously on stage. Rioting breaks out in the audience, with viewers randomly attacking anyone in front of them, regardless of prior relationship. Following the event, if any of the audience members survive the initial outbreak, they may exit the performance space, in which case, they will continue to engage in random or opportunistic violence. Victims will generally require sedation or restraint in this scenario. Normal personality will begin to return roughly 24 hours after the event. Surviving victims will generally exhibit signs consistent with a traumatic experience. Some will have no recollection of the event. Others may be rendered permanently comatose or psychotic. For a typical case study of an outbreak, see Incident Report SCP-701-19-1. An analysis of the events leading up to the last uncontained SCP-701 event in 19... doing a high school drama performance in... For more information on the play's published text, see document SCP-701-1640-B-1. 
In short, SCP-701 is a self-evolving memetic virus transmitted through unknown means to the text of the play. Doctor has theorized that SCP-701 events may involve. This hypothesis is consistent with a spike in levels detected via satellite in the vicinity of the 19 incident, indicating Foundation agents are understanding orders to suppress any performance or publication of SCP-701 whenever found or detected. Despite our best efforts to the contrary, however, the play remains freely available online, sometimes under different titles. All attempts to detect or isolate the origin of these copies have failed. Suppression of the play's publication have generally been successful, with most copies of 1971's scholarly edition destroyed before distribution. Nonetheless, copies of the 1965 trade paperback turn up with some regularity in both college and high school libraries. Agents are to obtain or otherwise destroy these items whenever possible. History The first known publication of the Hankins tragedy was as a quarto dated 1640. The play's author is not listed. The publisher, one William Cook, disappeared from the historical records soon thereafter. Strangely, the text does not appear in the stationer's register. The first known SCP-701 event on record occurred in 18 during a performance of the play in USA. Other significant incidents include the 19 performance at a small theater in the 1964 performance at the University of the 19 performance at University, the first SCP-701 event successfully suppressed by the Foundation, the 19 performance by a student group in California, the 19 television adaptation by the Broadcasting Corporation, production successfully shut down by the Foundation before broadcast, and the 19 incident in Ohio, USA. Designated SCP-701-19-1 Publication History Original 1640 Quarto All known copies in Foundation Custody 1733 Folio Edition Republished 1790 1813 Cambridge University Press Edition 1965 Trade Paperback Edition 1971 Hardcover Edition Agents should note that the copies of the play have often been misfiled under different titles or spellings of the title. Furthermore, photocopies of the 1965 text have been found in circulation throughout college theater departments in the continental United States and in the United Kingdom. Additional, even the high probability of In my mind, I again recommend that SCP-701 be upgraded to Keter class. The SCP-701 mimetic virus may very well be the forefront of an invasion scenario. Furthermore, Doctor Denied. None of the current information we have on SCP-701 indicates an XK class scenario. Until we have additional data, classification will remain adequate. Face facts, Doctor. The cat's being long out of the bag on this one. And in this line of business, we consider ourselves lucky if we only lose a hundred or so people every ten years. Oh, 05 Document SCP-701-1640-B-1 The following is a summary of the published text of the Han King's tragedy, classified SCP-701, prepared by Doctor, from a copy of the 1640 Guardo in Foundation custody. Dramatis Personae Gonzalo King of Trinculo Isabella, Queen of Trinculo, formerly the wife of Sforza, the murdered king, now married to Gonzalo Antonio, a minor noble Francisco, Antonio's servant The Duke of Sortino Alinda, daughter of the Duke Petruccio, a noble lord allied with Gonzalo Lodovico, a servant of Gonzalo Cornari, a priest Beatrice, a servant of the Queen, a courtesan, a palace watchman, the ambassador of Milan, the ambassador of Florence, the ambassador of Alagada, 
setting. The play is set in the kingdom of Tinkulu, probably a misspelling of Trinacria, another name for Sicily, in the capital city of Serco, another name for the city of Syracuse. As the play opens, Sforza, the king of Trinculo, has died, supposedly from natural causes while on retreat from the court. The nobility of Trinculo gathers in the capital for the coronation of the new king, Sforza's younger brother, Gonzalo, who has also married Sforza's queen, Isabella. Despite the text references to contemporary Italian city-states, such as Florence and Milan, much of the play's setting is obviously pure fantasy. There were never any kings of Sicily comparable to Gonzalo and Sforza, and the capital of the historical kingdom of Sicily was Palermo, not Syracuse. The author may have chosen to move the play's events to Syracuse, due to that city's historical association with tyranny. There is also no record of any country or place known by the name of Alagada, a mysterious but apparently powerful state that plays a significant role in the plot. It may be intended as a reference to one of the Muslim states or cities on the Mediterranean coast, such as Tunis or Algiers. Plot Summary The plot of the Hank King's tragedy bears a marked resemblance to many earlier plays of the same genre, including Shakespeare's Hamlet and Titus Andronicus. In fact, past investigations into SCP-701 events have noted that the Hank King's tragedy was often chosen for production as a less violent alternative to the two plays mentioned. The two murders in the SCP-701 text can be constructed as occurring off-stage, and the implication of a cannibalism in Act 3 can be easily caught from the script. Act 1 The play opens during Gonzalo's coronation. Gonzalo opens with a toast to the assembled nobility, then departs the stage. Drunk on the wine, Isabella confesses to some of the courtiers left on stage that Sforza did not die in his sleep as reported. Instead, while on retreat in the countryside, Sforza was fed a sleeping potion by Isabella, then murdered by Gonzalo and his supporters. As a final show of disrespect, the conspirators hang the king like a common criminal from a tree. Isabella goes on to proclaim that Antonio, a minor noble visiting the king's court for the first time, is actually her and Sforza's son and the rightful heir to the throne. Isabella collapses and is taken off stage by her servants. Francisco asks Antonio if he believes the Queen's story. Antonio makes light of the situation, and they exit. Back in Antonio's rented lodgings, Francisco attempts to barter with a courtesan. Antonio enters the stage, clearly in shock. He reports that, while off stage, he saw the ghost of Sforza, who confirmed Antonio's parentage and the Queen's description of his dead. Act 2. Gonzalo, having learned of Isabella's confession, consults with his fellow conspirators. Lodovico confirms that at least three people witnessed the Queen's breakdown, the Duke of Sortino, his daughter, Alida, and a priest named Gornari. Gonzalo immediately begins to plan the murder or capture of the tree in order to cover the truth. He orders Isabella to be locked up in a convent, with the story put out that the Queen is mad. Isabella, uncharacteristically, meekly accepts Gonzalo's judgment. The usurper then exits, having an appointment with the ambassador from Alagada. Back in their lodgings in the city, Francisco brings Antonio news of the Queen's imprisonment. Together, they begin to plan the revenge. Arc 3 Petruccio and Gonzalo invite Sertino to dinner. They kill him and order the palace cooks to prepare the corpse as a stew. Gonzalo orders Alinda, who witnessed the murder, to be locked up in the convent. Antonio fakes insanity in order to gain admittance to the convent. Warned of Antonio's coming, Isabella and her loyal servant, Beatrice, prepare to murder him using a draught of poison. Antonio sees through their plan and forces Isabella to drink the poison, killing her. Meanwhile, Francisco gets lost within the convent that winds up freeing Alinda from her cell by accident. Act 4 In the palace, Gonzalo reports to Lodovico that he has, in exchange for an unstated tribute, obtained a powerful and tasteless poison from the ambassador of Alagada. Gonzalo plans to poison the stew made from the dukes of Sortino's corpse and feed it to the court, thus censuring the suppression of the truth. Lodovico leaves the stage to carry out the usurper's plan. Gonzalo then has a brief moment of conscience. In a soliloquy, 
he describes the regret he carries for his sins, but is nonetheless unable to deviate from the path he has set. Meanwhile, Francisco introduces Alinda to Antonio, all three having escaped the convent. Alinda describes her father's murder in grisly terms. Antonio promises to marry her and make her his queen, as soon as his revenge is complete. He then leaves to obtain a blade, with which he plans to kill Gonzalo. There is a comedic interlude between Apaldo's guard and Cornari, a buffonish priest. At the end of the scene, Lodovico enters and bids Cornari to follow him. The priest is not seen on stage again. Act 5 The guests arrive at Gonzalo's banquet. Gonzalo once again offers a toast, this time to the ambassadors of the foreign nations who are present. The meal is served, however, before it can begin, Antonio enters bearing a signed confession he obtained from Petruccio of stage, which includes the details of Sforza's murder and proof of Antonio's lineage. Gonzalo is deposed by the outraged courtiers. Rather than murder him, however, Antonio instead decides to spare the usurper and let him accept exile to a monastery. He then orders Francisco to start making plans for his marriage to Alinda. The play ends with a dance staged by the courtiers. SCP-701 Events The produced form of the play that occurs during SCP-701 events contains several deviations from the text as published. For a typical example of these deviations, see Incident Report SCP-701-19-1. Incident Report SCP-701-19-1 SCP involved SCP-701 Date 19 Location Report prepared by doctors and on the content of SCP-701-19-8 SCP-701-19-8 is a 187 mm by 103 mm by 25 mm SVHS video cassette tape recorded by investigators from the scene of the incident a performance of SCP-701 at High school in. Tape was found in a destroyed consumer grade camcorder, which was apparently recording the performance from a vantage point within the audience. It is the only surviving record of the event. Please see SCP 701 archive for the full transcript of the recording. In order to compare the identified deviations during a SCP 701 event with the actual plot of the published text, see document SCP 701 1640 B. Dash one. Day begins. House lights go down. Curtain rises. The play begins as published with Gonzalo's coronation speech. A possible sighting of SCP-701-1 during Isabella's ravings. An anomalous shadow not belonging to one of the cast members shows up along the back wall of the set. Shadow disappears. First deviation from the text. Rather than the dialogue between Francisco and the courtesan, the curtain drops and comes back up on the bare stage. Antonio enters from stage right. First in direct sighting of SCP-701-1, the shadow of a figure seems to appear on the back wall from stage right. Antonio stops in place and acts surprised. The shadow disappears. Antonio begins a long soliloquy confirming that he now believes Isabella's story. Doctor notes that while this soliloquy is in the style of the rest of the play and seems to be accurate Caroline-era dialogue, Antonio's speech in this scene does not exist in the original text. Curtain drops Curtain rises on Francisco and the courtesan. Antonio returns. The play continues as scripted. First direct sighting of SCP-701-1. It enters and stands at the edge of stage left towards the end of Act 2, Scene 1. Gonzalo's dialogue concludes, as scripted, with the mention of an appointment with the ambassador from Alagada. He exits, stage left. SCP-701-1 seems to turn and follow him as the lights go down. Second sighting of SCP-701-1 during Act 3, Scene 1. It appears on the edge of stage right as Gonzalo and Petruccio murder Sortino. 
The scene concludes with Gonzalo ordering his cooks to prepare the corpse as stew. Scripts recovered from the scene indicate that this section had been cut out in rehearsal. Third sighting of SCP-701-1 appears close to stage left as Antonio kills Isabella. Fourth sighting SCP-701-1 enters with Gonzalo at the beginning of Act 4, Scene 1, and follows him through the scene. The scene also contains two key moments. First, Gonzalo seems to nod to SCP-701-1 when he mentions the Ambassador of Alagada. This is the first time a cast member has seemed to indicate SCP-701-1's presence. Second, the scene ends with a deviation from the text. Whereas the scripted speech at the end of Act 4, Scene 1, ends with Gonzalo considering his own moral inequity, Gonzalo here seems to be more concerned that his tribute will be sufficient for the Ambassador. The lights go down. Fifth sighting. SCP-701-1 enters stage left at the end of Act 4, Scene 2, as Antonio leaves to secure a blade for his coup. Rather than exiting, Antonio stops in front of SCP-701-1, who hands him a long dagger. This is believed to be the first appearance of the item classified as scp 701 19 b Note that there is no mention of the item in the prop list, or the other records maintained by the production. SCP-701-1 and Antonio depart this stage together. Sixth sighting. SCP-701-1 appears on stage left as Cornari and Ludovico exit. The lights come up. Act 5, Scene 1, The Banquet Scene, begins as scripted. Antonio enters, bearing a piece of parchment. Here, the textual deviations begin in earnest. Rather than the parchment being Petruccio's confession as scripted, Antonio instead describes it as an invoice from the Ambassador of Alagada, proving that Gonzalo owes more tribute than he intends to pay. SCP-701-1 enters at this point from stage right. The entire cast seems to perceive it. Gonzalo stands up, curses as an aside to the audience, and runs for stage left. The rest of the cast, including Alinda and Francisco, who enter from stage left, physically restrain Gonzalo and drag him back onto the stage. SCP-701-1, meanwhile, moves to the center of the stage, where it stands in front of Gonzalo's throne. A noose is dropped onto the stage from above. The cast force Gonzalo into the noose as he begins to curse in Italian, and in one place, possibly Latin, the noose is round toned, and the cast drops Gonzalo. He begins to asphyxiate. Antonio speaks. With this, the tribute, in full, it is paid. The actor takes SCP-701-19-B, the dagger and draws it across Gonzalo's stomach, spilling his intestines across the stage. Alinda takes the dagger from Antonio. She speaks. With this, fool's blood, it is the Hanged Kings. She cuts Antonio's throat. Rope drops from the roof of the stage, a noose for each cast member. The cast assembles underneath them. Alinda takes position next to SCP-701-1. Alinda, with this, our blood, it is the Hanged Kings. The cast hang themselves. SCP-701-1 moves through the hanging corpses and to front center stage. The stage lights cut out. Sounds of screaming and physical violence are around the camera. Loud sound, most likely the camera being knocked over. The camera is destroyed. Tape ends. In law. The Hang King is just one of the many manifestations of the entity, also known as the King in Yellow. Its madness and violence have taken many forms in different literary media. Detecting and eradicating these spontaneous manifestations of violence is difficult, but it is a continuous effort that should not be underestimated, as the Foundation's higher-ups tend to do often. A life that would have been saved through timely action is reason enough to end this anomaly. If the cat is out of the bag, it's because the Foundation allows it. We won't do the same. Help us continue our work by leaving your comments and suggestions below. I am Virus Anonimo, we are the GOC, and you have been informed.